Hi everyone, I'm Nina, and I'm Shannon. We're here today to introduce our new mini media mat. Last year, we have a water media mat which will hold paper size up to nine by twelve. And my friend Lori Quig contacted me and said she needs a smaller size so she can use it on the airplane when you can fold down the airplane table, and the mat will not move because it has the suction backing of the silicone. Mm -hmm. So that's why she wanted. She wants a pallet that does not slide during the flight mm -hmm. um, to move. And I thought a smaller size would be really convenient because for me, even though I have a big table, I have all the supplies all around me, and actually, I only I only have a smaller size for mm -hmm. me to bring anything new into my car making process. So that small size is really handy. Whenever I need to color blend, I just put it into a little place. And it's easy to store too. Yes, it is. It's great for, I know when I'm crafting, my table gets full of stuff very quickly and then I realize I need to ink blend. So the mat's really easy to kind of clean a small space, grab your mat, and then you can do your ink blending. So it's really handy. So we've been loving it. So this is how the mini media mat compares in size to the original media mat. Because the mini media mat is designed for travel, we included a little travel case to go with the mat. And in your packaging, you'll also find this little instruction sheet shows you um, what the basic functions are for the silicone mat. So take it out of the packaging. The suction back of the mat sticks to your table and will not rock, move, or slide around during your creative process. Grab a corner and peel it off when you're done. If you lose this, it's clean. Turn it over and clean with a baby wipe to remove any dust that it has accumulated, then let it dry or pan dry with a paper towel, it's good to go again. The indented work area holds a paper sized up to five by seven, and the smooth matte white surface makes colors pop. So let's go ahead and review some of our cool techniques Shannon came up with uh, that works with water media mat, but we wanted to show you on the mini media mat so you can have a better idea of what you can do with it. One of my favorite techniques with the media mat is ink blending. Your paper doesn't slide around thanks to the matte surface, and it's just a really great surface to start your ink blending on. I have an A2 panel here. I got some Distress Oxide colors. I'm going to start with the color, ink up my dauber, and then just tap off any excess ink on my mat, and then go to the surface of my paper. So it's a really handy surface to kind of dab that ink off onto. So this is the Tsukineko uh, ink dauber. It's the jumbo ink dauber you're using. Oh, awesome. It's really nice. It has a nice smooth surface. You can see we're getting a really beautiful soft blend already. So I'm going to do a little gradation here with some inks, starting with abandoned coral. Then I move on to an orange. Tap off the excess again onto the so mat. So you're not worried about the color contaminating each other? No, it's just a small amount of abandoned coral left on here. If it was a really dark ink, maybe I would stop and clean in between, but this is a pretty light color. Okay. So just tap off the excess and then you'll start from the same edges or you're starting the middle? Since this is going to be my middle color, I'm going to start slightly over the abandoned coral that I ink blended before. Okay. And why we tap off is so we don't get those kind of harsh, harsh edges. Yeah. Mm. And I like to ink blend in circles. Now my last color. Now I'm going to rotate my paper around because it's always easier to start from an edge and work in if you can. This is my yellow. I've got my dauber again. Tap off the excess. Because uh, you're basically blending in the same color family. So you're not worried about having the color contaminating each other. If you're blending kind of like uh, purple into green or something, you will want to clean up before you do this, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm just really worried about <laughs> color contaminating each other, so, <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, it's very easy to clean. On it's super brand, easy to clean, so. yeah. The um, So there are some colors that will stain your mat, um, but oxides are pretty safe. The distressed oxides are, are safe. Mm -hmm. How about distress inks? They are pretty safe as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are our, the most popular inks for blending, and they're all very safe on the, like, they don't stain the water media mat and the mini media mat. Yeah, they come off, and we'll show you when we clean this up real quick how nicely this, these inks will come right off. 
Now I'm just going to smooth out my transition between the colors. I always go back through after I ink blend through all three. I'll go back through once more and kind of smooth out the gradation between the colors. Use the Mito color that you used, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then I'll do my last one, Abandoned Coral. And again, I'm going to rotate my panel around. Open that up and then Is this just to make the colors mix a little bit better? Yeah, it just kind of helps the transition to go back a little bit more. Sometimes you lose the color that you did first mm -hmm. when you introduce the new color. So sometimes it's nice to pop that color back in. And, and if I didn't get, like maybe I felt like I was, actually felt like I had a little too little abandoned coral. I was losing it a little bit, so I popped some more back in. And that's pretty okay. much it. So one of my favorite things to do after I ink blend is add some water spots. And the mat's really great to kind of go straight into that. So you can just squeeze out some water onto the mat, load your brush up with some water. It's okay. Whoa, and that's the ink you pick up? You don't, you don't have to pick up, you could do clear, but yellow's a light color, so I could go straight to my paper with the yellow. I'm gonna get a little bit clearer. Oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So now I'm just gonna tap my finger on the brush, and that's gonna release that water, and we're gonna get some fun oh. water spots right away. So it's the mat's really great to go straight from your ink blending to your, um, your water spots, because it's a great surface to kind of splatter some of that water on. That's beautiful. Okay. A any brush will do, right? Any brush would do, yes. We are using a water brush, but I at home typically I just use a regular brush loaded up with water. This brush is thirsty. He likes to hold on to the water. <laughs> yeah, because this is water. <laughs> we should find a better one, but <laughs> okay. But you're still going to see this kind of how the water spots show up, and it's just a fun way to kind of distress your background a little bit. Yeah, and this is why we like distress inks and distress oxide inks for ink blending, because you can reactivate the ink by it just adding water. You wanna show us how you clean it? Oh yeah, let's clean our mat now. <laughs> so let me move my panel out of the way. Just have a baby wipe handy. Sometimes at home I'll just use a chamois as well. And I just go over the mat. You can see how that ink just comes right off. Can you use a microfiber towel? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but when you do the microfiber towel, it needs to be wet, like yes. the chamois. They both need to be wet. No, I mean, they both need to be dampened so that the water will goes in them. So our next technique, we're gonna do some ink smushing. So I have a A2 panel here of watercolor paper. This is gonna hold up really well to all the water we're gonna introduce. And I picked out a rainbow of inks to use. We're gonna start with our middle color. I have seven colors picked out. I'm gonna do a rainbow, so I'm gonna start with my middle color, just help get my placement right. Just so start in the center. Yes. It's kinda of like embroidery or uh, cross stitch. You start in the center. Oh, really? So, I didn't know yeah. that. <laughs> So, <clears throat> well, I, I was just trying to have something um, like help me ease my mind that I can think of things when I'm doing. So I pick up embroidery again and just learning about it. And it's like, so you have your center, so it's easier to help you position everything. So it's kind of like a design kind of concept. I know for like lettering, if I'm ever like writing something sometimes, uh -huh. I'll start with the middle letter. So I get my positioning right. Oh, yeah. yeah. I my wondering my question is do you want to swipe it? Oh, or you, you want to map? Uh, I use, pat? I usually just press down. I think I get more release of, of ink. ink. Okay, got yeah. it, got it. Okay. So now that I have my rainbow uh, smooshed down, all my colors down, I'm going to spritz with water. Move my pad out or move this out of the <laughs> I'll way. I'll hold it for you. Thanks. <laughs> Get a lot, fair amount of water there so it can bead up, so you can see it's starting to bead up there. And now I'm ready to smush my panel down into it. Uh, do you care it, which side you use? You know, it doesn't matter in this instance if you use the rough or smooth side of your watercolor paper. Press it down. Oh, and you can move it? Just a little, just because it was a little short on the edges. Oh, uh, okay. And there oh, you go. gorgeous. You can let it dry and it'll look something like this when it's all done. Cool. And you can even pick up this ink as well on another uh, A2 panel. So here I just have regular cardstock because there's not a lot of water here, so I don't have to worry about it. So this is actually regular cardstock. You this can is do just it regular, too. yeah. Not even a heavy weight, only 65, I believe. From my cuffs. Yes. Press around here. And we're gonna get like a fine little dots. Oh, nice. Okay, and if you want to kind of get out of the big drips down there, just use a piece of paper towel 
um, or I'm just using a dried out um, baby wipe to kind of get the water excess water out so it doesn't kind of because this is regular cast stock so mm -hmm. I don't want to to buckle up or oh, something. Yeah. That's beautiful. This could be a very cool technique background. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. One thing I like about the mat is it provides a cushion for stamping. I have a cute little mouse here from the Grow Happiness stamp set. I'm going to stamp it down onto a piece, an A2 panel of white cardstock. Okay, so now we're going to ink up our stamp and then just stamp it down. Are you being mindful about where you're stamping? I am because I'm saving some for room to do some mirrored stamping later, which is one of my favorite techniques with the mat. Okay. You can see how perfectly our little mouse stamped. Now let's show you mirrored stamping. So for mirrored stamping, I really like to use the Misty. So I've got my original Misty here. I'm going to pick up our mat and place it inside of the Misty. Remove that magnet and line up the edge of the mat with the edge of the Misty. There we go. So now I can fold over. Then I'll grab my little mouse here. I'm going to put him here. This is where I'm going to stamp her. And when I press my paper down, the image will go right here. Pick her up. Now I'll just ink her up like I normally would. Now that my mouse is all inked up, I'm going to fold my Misty over, stamp down onto the mini mat, and there we go. We have a perfect impression. If this per impression wasn't perfect, I could clean the mat and stamp it again. It's not a perfect fit for the mini media mat into the original Misty, but it doesn't hurt that we have a little bit sticking out, right? No, it doesn't hurt at all. Because you're lining up this edge. Mm -hmm. Cause, and you also don't want to stamp it on this edge also because this thing is sticking out, but you're stamping over there, so it's not affecting anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Yeah, the lower left corner is a great place to stamp for mirrored stamping. So now that my image is stamped, I'm ready to transfer the image onto our cardstock. So I'm going to just, I like to line my cardstock corner up with the, the corner of the mini mat just in case I have to do it twice to get it really dark, it's easy to stamp it again and get a second impression on top of the first so it's even darker and bolder lines. All right, thank you. I'm gonna pop this into the corner and then press over it with my finger. This is gonna transfer that image from the mat onto the cardstock. And there you go. Beautiful. <laughs> so. They are facing away from each other, but what I like to do is I like to actually stamp the mirrored image onto the die cut, and we have a great video demonstrating that on Waffle Flower's YouTube channel, which I will share the link below, or you can check out over here. And after you do your mirrored stamping, it's, it's easy to clean up, just like it was with the Distress Inks, baby wipe, and then just wipe your image away. For this VersaFine, if it's a little bit sticking, you can use a stamp cleaner to get the rest of it off. So yes. VersaFine works really well. The next technique I'm going to share with you involves acrylic paint. I have a rainbow of acrylic paints picked out. I'm going to squeeze them down a small amount onto the mat. First, I'm going to shake up my paint, mix that water and paint together. This is just regular Micos paint, right? Yes, this is just a, your really basic acrylic paint. Nothing fancy. Nothing fancy. Probably the lowest grade. You don't have to get the, you don't have okay. to get the cheapest stuff, but this so, came in a pack. Yeah, so those are the Oh, they come in the pack. Yeah, I okay. bought a pack of twelve colors, I believe. So it was more cost effective to buy them all at once together in a pack. You have a full set syndrome. I well, <laughs> I do. Well I definitely I'm a sucker for price per unit. <laughs> The price per unit is cheaper when I buy more than I'm going to buy more. <laughs> so you're starting on the edge so you can spray it out. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Does it matter like 
the spacing is not even right now. <laughs> it doesn't matter because it's going to get kind of, I might even have to add a little bit more. Yeah. But I do want to make sure. I love, I love the four colors right there. That's they such a pretty. cute, that's such a cute color palette. So pretty. Okay. And I might do a tiny bit more pink. Mm -hmm. I probably should have given a little bit more space. So you didn't start from the center this time? I should have right. started from the center. <laughs> okay. I should have started from the center. You, you, <laughs> you should have started from the green. I should have done that. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to, this is a brayer. I'm going to take this brayer and place it into the paint and then kind of move it back and forth to kind of mix those colors and create a rainbow. So this is a rubber brayer, right? Yes. You can get from any craft stores or hardware store. Yes, this is a hard rubber brayer. A soft rubber, a soft rubber brayer will work as well. You can see the colors are starting to mix. And we're getting that rainbow just back and forth. You just want to make sure you go back and forth instead of like side to side. Well, I feel like we need more yellow. Can we still add more? Yeah, we definitely could. Yeah. Let's grab a little bit more yellow. It does look a little like we can see the white of the mat. Okay, that should be plenty. And that's our light. Lights are, if you're going to lose a color, a light's the color you'll typically lose. Gets kind of lost, eaten up right away by the darks. All right, come on, yellow, spread out there. He's not wanting to spread out. Can I choose a paintbrush to brush it out? You could. Oh, there we go. I think that's good. Oh, yeah, actually. we got it. We got it. Yeah. All right. So look at that pretty rainbow. So I created my own stamp. I die cut a sentiment using the oversized Hello Word die out of some white craft foam and then adhered it just using a tape runner onto an acrylic block. This will come off later, so don't worry. It doesn't, you don't ruin your acrylic block or anything. But this is going to pick up the paint and we can transfer it onto our cardstock. I found that the stamp picks up the paint a little bit better. If you kind of dampen it a little bit, I'm just gonna use a baby wipe here just to kind of get that surface a little bit damp so it can grab onto that paint a little bit better. Oh, it's kind of removing whatever the manufacturing residue yeah, it's kind of down opens, there or opened up the pores. Exactly, some. like it opens up the pores a little bit. Okay, now that that's a little bit damp, you can go into the paint, kind of pick it up, and we have paint on our hello. Uh oh, this is going to be backwards. I just realized that. Now we realize the problem. Let's do it again. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> so I'm going to start by die cutting out some white craft foam with the oversized Hello Word die. I really like to use my cuddle bug to cut craft foam. I find that it doesn't smush the craft foam very much. There's our hello die cut out. Because this is a sentiment, we have to make sure that we adhere our stamp, essentially, the correct way so we get the right impression. We don't get a mirrored impression. So I'm going to use the die as a reference and just adhere my craft foam onto my acrylic block the same way that the die looks. I'm going to add the tape to the, to the right side because I'm in... That's the side that's going to go down onto the block. Just dabbing the tape runner on the, no need to do it everywhere. Yeah, you don't have to get it everywhere. So. so now that I have the adhesive on my hello, I'm going to adhere it down onto the acrylic block. Or you could use your die below when you mount it so oh. you can get an exact exact positioning of how the letters are. That's a great tip. Now I'm going to wet my stamp a little bit. This is just going to make sure the acrylic paint sticks to the surface of the craft foam a little bit better. So even though I messed up, all I have to do here is just go back over. I might need to squeeze out a little bit of paint if some areas are dry, but we'll just start by rolling it over the, rolling the brayer over. 
can still see that we have a fair amount of liquid still over. Our, our, our paint is still pretty liquidy, so I think we're okay. I think we're in the clear here. So this is a pretty forgiving process. I want to keep all that paint on there. <laughs> you do? <laughs> yeah, you it like looks so rainbow? pretty. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now i got my paper ready. First thing I'm going to do is ink up my hello. You can go back and forth over. There we go. So you can see now the stamp's got all the ink on it. Just move this to the side. Okay, so now I'm going to stamp. I could tell already that it's going to be the right way this time. <laughs> you should be able to look through your acrylic block and the sentiment should be legible. That's kind of how you knew. That's how I knew right away last time I did it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this could be your mirrored image if you want to do a mirrored thing. You there know? it is. It looks so pretty. Right. Okay, so to clean, you can just use your baby wipes again. You might want to actually even go kind of take a paper towel first and kind of clean up either one. Because there's wipe. a lot of paint. There's a lot there. of paint left on here. I normally, what if we just wash it off? Uh, you. I just don't know if you want to have all that acrylic paint going down your sink. First, oh. I would pick it up first and get as much as I can with a baby wipe and then do a final clean rinse through the sink is what I would do at home. Okay, got it. If you don't need to move all the ink right now, you could have just let it dry and then the paint peels off. And normally when I, if I'm gonna do acrylic paint, I will make several panels at once mm -hmm. because it really get the most out of squeezing that paint down onto the mat. So I would um, make a couple at the, cause you can see how, you saw how I just kind of re-rolled and had a new surface to pick up paint from. So you can make a lot of panels at one time. So you're, so it doesn't feel like you're wasting a lot of paint for one panel. And it's a good thing. None of the paint will stain the mat. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. So, um, it's a good thing. Like if I left anything over, I can clean it out later. No, but that's pretty good, you know, fairly. We're just sitting here and I clean it all out. Mm -hmm. We're only using the paint. Like most of the paint was still on there. Yeah. yeah so it was pretty easy to clean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you liked this acrylic paint technique, we have another video on Waffle Flowers YouTube channel. You can check out the link below in the description or over here, demonstrating a couple other ways to use acrylic paint with the media mat. Before we go, we have one quick tip to share. You can also use the mini media mat and the water media mat to make your own enamel dots with the new wood drops. Let me show you how easy it is. Always trying to squeeze out to get it started. And then I'll have my thing straight up. So probably this is not a good camera size. Let me try whether I can do it from the side. And make it up. So right now they look a little weird, but don't worry because we're gonna tap on it so that um, all the colors will be great, but yeah, you'll definitely get a better results when you go straight up and down. You can make even dots, bigger dots, small dots. Once they're dry, you have your own size and connection of enamel dots. Oops, okay, that one didn't go. You could even probably make like a little heart too. Yeah, yeah. You want to try that? Maybe we do it with that little blooper Maybe. one, huh? Oh, okay, go ahead. Maybe. Let's see. I haven't done it before. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like doing it on camera for the first time. Oh, that's a cute heart. I like it's uneven too. Oh, that's gorgeous. Okay, that's so cute. Okay, so once you're done, see, we have done this for a while, even though they look kind of weird, they all kind of flattened out in this moment and what you can also do you know it's like your cookie sheet you can take it up and tap it a little bit on the table to make it go even more spread out and even they run it out those look beautiful okay so once uh, we'll come back and share with you once they're dried we can just peel them off and adhere them to our project while letting it dry i will have a bow or something to turn over to cover the dots so no dust will get in there and again, it takes, you would let this dry for two, two days? Two to three days. Okay, great. Magically, it's been three days. And let's see how it peels off. And they just cute. That's it for our videos today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like more creative ideas, head over to our YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.